uma nova zona cocaleira foi implantada no Peru, nesta região do Baixo Amazonas. Os seguidores dessas seitas, que nós queremos serem fanáticos, estão plantando coca. Antes não era assim, isto era livre, não havia, não havia, não havia habitantes. This is a coca plantation here in the lower Amazon basin, an area where 10 years ago this crop and this cultivation uh, was completely unknown. Welcome to Iquitos, Peru, right on the Amazon River, deep in the Peruvian rainforest. We're in an area that is close to the region where Colombia and Brazil meet Peru. This is an incredibly isolated place where you can only get to by plane or by boat. Right now, we're on our way to a pier on the river that's gonna get us on a boat that's gonna take us for 14 hours up this river in order to locate and meet a community known as the Ataucusi. They call themselves the Israelites. Since 2013, Peru has become the world's leading producer of coca leaf and cocaine, replacing Colombia. Most of that coca is grown in the cool high altitude region of Peru known as the Vrai, the type of climate where coca traditionally thrives. But in the following years, as coca interdiction efforts applied more pressure on coca growers, Peru's Amazon basin suddenly became a choice spot, thanks to an apparently new variety of coca leaf that is adapting to the Amazon's fragile ecosystem. It's not a place where crops were ever meant to be grown. But in 1995, a religious group known as the Altaucusi, or the Israelites, decided that this tropical rainforest would be its promised land. They came to settle and to introduce farming to the Amazon soil. Their prophet, Ezekiel Atalcusi, told them they would be Peru's living frontiers in the forgotten regions of the country that formed the so-called triple border with Colombia and Brazil. Since then, the Atalcusi have lost their leader. And according to anti-drug authorities in Brazil, some members of the Israelites church in the Amazon rainforest have been directly involved in the region's booming cocaine industry. So we decided to come here to try to figure out how much of these allegations are true and to see if we could get to know this reclusive and apocalyptic church. This journey felt a bit like stepping into a scene from the Werner Herzog film Fitzcarraldo. In fact, this is where it was filmed. The trip was slow and long. We were told it could take up to two days to get to our destination. At dawn, with almost another halfway to go, we met our first member of the Atalcusi church. It was pretty easy to spot her. This is a community that has uh, separated itself from Peruvian society. They dress in biblical clothes, biblical costumes, and really they are isolated as they attempt um, to sort of establish their presence permanently on the Amazon as they conquer the Amazon rainforest. The riverboat left us on the dirt pier of Alto Monte. The self-confessed Israelites are a peaceful people, but they're not exactly welcoming to outsiders. We had heard that every Friday they hold a ceremony on the banks of the river. If we played it right, maybe we could film it. But we had to ask for permission and keep a low profile upon arrival. This organization has a name that's as long as it is incomprehensible. The Evangelical Association of the Israelite Mission of the New Universal Covenant. Their spiritual capital is here in Alto Monte, founded 20 years ago by people answering the call of their prophet Ezekiel to populate the borders of the Amazon. Todos los israelitas somos trabajadores. Trabajaremos codo a codo en el agro para llevar a cabo con el desarrollo agropecuario. They migrated from all across Peru, many fleeing economic hardships or the internal war with the Maoist guerrillas' shining path. Que vengan todos aquí a Alto Monte de Israel para que así trabajen junto con nosotros y así aprendan muchas cosas que así que en la selva. Expectations were high. 
Today, 7,000 people live in this remote community with no running water, paved streets, or cell phone coverage. They use solar generators for the little amount of electricity there is to go around. It doesn't quite look like the promised land that Ezekiel Altaucusi told them it would be. Para poder entender a la congregación israelita del Nuevo Pacto Universal, uno tiene que estudiar en primer lugar al líder, al que lo fundó. Ezequiel Atacusi Gamonal representa la naturaleza social, la composición social de los seguidores. Proceder de ámbitos de los Andes, de los valles interandinos, los más pobres de los pobres. Él toma contacto con las Sagradas Escrituras gracias a su vinculación con los adventistas, pero considera que los adventistas no están haciendo el trabajo adecuado para poder salvar al mundo de una hecatombe que va a venir. Dios se le estaba apareciendo todas las noches y lo entrenaba en la lectura de las Sagradas Escrituras. Y él cuenta que en un determinado momento es ascendido al tercer cielo. Y en el tercer cielo se encuentra con la Santísima Trinidad, con el Padre, el Hijo y el Espíritu Santo. Y le dicen que escriba los diez mandamientos. Él logra ir congregando más adeptos, más adeptos para desarrollar esta misión y nace el movimiento de los israelitas del Nuevo Pacto Universal. Juan Osio told us the Atalcusi started to figure out the importance of politics as a means to achieve the goals of their church. So they created a political party known by its acronym FREPAP. Ezekiel ran for president on the FREPAP ticket in 1990, nabbing 200,000 votes, and succeeded in placing members of his party in Congress. <laughs> Usted eh, dice ser profeta, ¿verdad? ¿Usted es profeta? Ya lo ha dicho. Dios me ha dicho que usted es profeta. Ezekiel ran again in 1995 and was preparing to run in 2000 when he suddenly died. The leader was supposed to have reincarnated the third day after his death, but to church members' surprise, that didn't happen. So the group decided that the spirit of Ezekiel must have had transmigrated to the body of his son, Jonas. A largely absent figure, Jonas doesn't even communicate with Altomonte. Despite their absent leader, the Frapap movement remains alive today, with a base of voters still active in the jungle communities. We're heading now closer to the river, to the center, the spiritual center of the town, I should say, the church, and uh, we're going to meet the elder council. Desde el año 1995 se ha venido migrando todos los israelitas de los 24 departamentos. Entonces ahora estas comunidades producen, se está creando un estado sólido que se va formando solo. After a brief time talking to the elder council, our sit-down interview was cut short. The elders rushed outside for Altomonte's Friday evening prayers. Clearly, this was an important ritual for the Atalcusi, their weekly offering to God. These men literally stopped in their tracks when the music and singing at the church began. It's, it's 6 p.m. now, and the brothers are headed to the alabanza, to the prayers. And then a ritual began in Alto Monte that few outsiders have seen before. The Israelites offer an animal sacrifice to God, or as they call it, a holocaust, just as Ezekiel had taught them to do. The women are on one side, the men on another, and this is the sacrifice that is being offered on this Friday by the Israelites. This is about as close as I think I'll ever get to living in biblical times.
Gradually, we began to learn more about the Israelites and their beliefs. They preach the apocalypse, awaiting a new cosmic cycle where the Amazon will become a paradise overflowing with milk and honey. They believe they have a divine right to settle and work the land. They also believe their beards are antenna that reach God's frequency. After arriving here, the brothers began expanding their settlements while also taking charge of local agricultural commerce. Today, the Atacusi are the chief suppliers of consumer produce for the Peruvian Amazon. Then something in Peru shifted. It's not exactly clear how, but coca, one of the most profitable crops on earth, began arriving in the Amazon basin, possibly from growers from the Colombian side venturing into new territory. Altomonte sits exactly here, and small farmers belonging to the church live in remote corners of the rainforest surrounding it. And that is why authorities, particularly from neighboring Brazil, say some of the group's members have become involved in the drug trade here. On this visit, we didn't see coca in the vicinity of Alto Monte, so we headed to the Brazilian side of the triple border to learn more. We just crossed into Tabatinga, Brazil. This is the community directly on the Brazilian side of the triple border region. Uh, no one stopped us, no one asked for our passports, uh, no one searched our vehicle. So you can kind of get a sense of how porous this border really is and the challenges that the anti-drug efforts of these three governments are facing as they face increasing coca production in this triple frontier region. Today, the triple border has become a no man's land where few policemen enter. Between Tabatinga, Brazil, Leticia, Colombia, and a small village called Santa Rosa in Peru, barely any authorities are present. For starters, the Peruvian Amazon province of Mariscal Ramon Castilla sits next to Brazil, the world's second biggest consumer of cocaine after the United States. According to UN estimates, in the last five years, coca plantations in the province have grown by 400%. We met Mauro Sposito, a senior investigator with the Brazilian Federal Police. He's kept an eye on the Altocusi in the region, and he helped us map out the situation on a large scale. Nós temos uh, a comprovação de que os seguidores dessa seita, que nós cremos serem fanáticos, estão plantando coca. Eu tenho as fotos exato dos cultivos de coca em terras deles e tenho fotos deles presos transportando cocaína. E não todos cultivam coca, alguns cultivam coca. Uma nova zona cocaleira foi implantada no Peru, nesta região do Baixo Amazonas. Nós estimamos, exato, que um hectare de folha de coca chega a produzir 30 quilos de pasta base de cocaína. Que esses cultivos possam ultrapassar fronteiras. Nós queremos a destruição de laboratórios que produzem drogas naquela região. Nós, Polícia Federal, Exato, fornecemos inteligência à Polícia Nacional do Peru para que a Polícia Nacional do Peru promova a destruição de laboratórios naquela região. Every year, the Brazilian Federal Police and Durandro, the Peruvian anti drug agency, run a joint operation called Operación Trapecio. Durandro allowed a vice news cameraman to ride along with them on an interdiction operation, right in the region where the Atacusi presence is strongest. We spoke to Miguel Ángel Peric, who is chief of operations in the division that combats drugs in the Amazon. Las zonas tradicionales cocaleras son zonas de montaña, de ceja de selva, pero acá en la selva baja, con un clima muy diferente, eh, ahora encontramos plantaciones pues, de, de hoja de coca, de cultivos de, de coca, donde se han adaptado a este terreno. ¿no? La geografía propia de la selva es tan amplia y en la práctica nosotros hemos sido, hemos destruido laboratorios clandestinos en ese sentido y posteriormente cuando regresamos eh, eh, hay, hay nuevos, nuevos este, laboratorios que pueden ir surgiendo. ¿no? También hemos tenido enfrentamientos directos con estas personas que buscan pues que proteger su inversión. ¿no? En 
en esta parte de la selva utilizan un método que le llaman o le denominan el método del solvente o el método colombiano, un tanque de agua de 3.000 litros y ahí van procesando con la hoja de coca. La hoja de coca se utiliza la hoja de coca verde, no la hoja de coca seca. A través de un proceso que lo mezclan con químicos, buscan la reacción de, para la extracción del alcaloide de una manera más rápida. En estos momentos estamos llegando a una de las pozas que se ha podido divisar desde lo alto. Es una poza de regular tamaño, tiene cilindros. We're about aboard this plane that's getting prepped here behind me. We're at a Peruvian Air Force base. We're heading now to Guayococha on the Amazon River in the triple border region between Peru, Colombia, and Brazil. This area right now is the hotbed of trafficking and coca leaf production. But for the most part, the actors involved are unknown. So we're going to head there, try and get a better sense of who is involved. Caballo Cocha is a mixed community, but with a strong presence of Atacusi as well as Colombian nationals. From our prop engine plane, we could see the spectacular strength of the Amazon River and the patches of flattened clearings where people have grown crops. Plantations like the ones we hope to find here have been discovered in jungle areas as far north as the southeastern rainforest in Mexico. The implications are huge. If the triple border region can grow coca, other tropical or subtropical regions in the world could potentially follow suit. In this region alone, coca production is estimated to have grown 73% between 2012 and 2013, which is quite alarming. Marino Chavez is a former mayor of Caballo Cocha. He is an Atacusi believer and has spoken to the press about the issues facing the residents of the Amazon. We talked to him to better understand the situation. La gente sabe que el narcotráfico es malo, pero la necesidad es la que les conlleva a hacer esas cosas. Entonces es un enfrentamiento entre peruanos por el tema, pues uno está pagado por el Estado para erradicar y el otro con su pobreza tiene que continuar, entonces eso viene los, la, la conclusión de enfrentamientos. Nuestro espacio es enorme, pero sin embargo no tenemos presencia de empresas. No hay presencia de empresas en este lugar, a pesar que hay una cantidad de cosas que hacer. Acá tenemos para invertir muchísimo en el turismo, en la agricultura y todo, pero sin embargo somos totalmente abandonados. After days in Caballo Cocha, meeting locals and community leaders, we finally managed to convince a local to show us a coca plantation. We promised to not reveal who owned the coca or where exactly the plantation was located. So this is what it's all about. Now as Peru has become the top coca producing and cocaine producing country in the world, there is more and more plantations such as this in an area that hadn't seen them. Uh, this is believed to be a new strain, a strain of the coca leaf that has adapted to this hot, hostile, uh, tropical zone. For better or worse, the Atacusi are established in this area, where coca production is on the rise, alarming authorities. And while the Israelites introduced agriculture to a region that didn't have it, intent on becoming the living frontiers of Peru, they initiated a crisis of deforestation that continues to this day. Whatever happens in the Amazon, of course, has grave repercussions elsewhere in the world. Well, these are crops that simply did not grow in the Amazon before the Israelite Israelitas community came here. And as you can see, this family has a little bit of everything. Jose Alvarez works in Peru's environmental ministry and lived in the Amazon region for 30 years. He understands the enormous effects that deforestation in the Amazon rainforest could have on an international scale. In Amazonia, you tumbas the bosque and destroy the source of life. And the nutrients. The environmental impact 
es muy grande porque ellos han traído una cultura agropecuaria a una zona que no tiene vocación agropecuaria. El bosque es el recurso estratégico no solo para el mismo mantenimiento del ecosistema amazónico, sino para regulación del clima global. Hoy se sabe de la tremenda relevancia que tiene el ecosistema amazónico en el clima del Atlántico. Claro. Hay modelos que demuestran que si se deteriorase gravemente la Amazonía podrían disminuir significativamente la, las lluvias en el occidente de Estados Unidos. Entonces, eh, eso le, le da una relevancia tremenda en un escenario de cambio climático. ¿no? La tierra ya un poco perdió su fuerza para dar el, el alimento, que entonces se, se va ampliando más adentro, encontrando nuevas tierras. Sus ideas del maestro eran más grandes de lo que nosotros podemos pensar. The Peruvian Amazon is changing, and the Atacusi are changing too. We return to Alto Monte in time for the weekly sacrifice. On Saturday, everyone dresses up in the gowns that are customary for this holy day, the Atacusi's Holocaust. In order to film inside the church with ease, elders in the community suggested I dress in the Atacusi robes as well. Wow. El día sábado definitivamente es un, es un día consagrado para Jehová. No se trabaja. Este es un uniforme. Este es un uniforme que, que uno se pone para rendir homenaje a Dios en nuestras repúblicas, lo que es a, el asuntos terrenales, los gobiernos. Hay un, hay un ejército que se rinde homenaje a la bandera, a la patria. Entonces nosotros con este vestido también venimos a rendirle homenaje, a rendirles honor a Dios. The Atacusi are convinced that they are God's new chosen people. In fact, they trace their divine lineage to the ancient Incas. Para nosotros Machu Picchu es un lugar sagrado, porque Machu Picchu fue construido por un lugar sagrado, porque ahí se ofrecía ofrenda o holocausto a Dios. Los Incas no fueron hombres comunes, fueron hombres de Dios. Aquí están este, haciendo la Por ejemplo, el becerrito va a ser sacrificado, ¿no? Como decía la sagrada, la, el texto bíblico, para hacer la ofrenda a la consagrada a Dios. Oh. So nasty, güey. It remains unclear whether the Atacusi cult is falling victim to the rise of coca in this area or profiting from the jungle's latest cash crop, cocaine. The truth may lie somewhere in the middle. After some negotiations, the Minister of Defense of Alto Monte agreed to speak with us. He seemed at ease talking about this issue, but he also didn't seem to share a whole lot. Los peones de estos señores que cultivan la coca te vienen y te ofrecen. La ganaría no da plata. La coca, la plata, 100 mil dólares. Y ahí para adentro hay cantidad de coca. Para, de los, ¿Aquí dentro de sí, todo mundo? No, no, para allá, para allá. Sí, fuera. Pero nos están afectando. Nos están afectando muchísimo. Ahora, si ¿sí del, del, del narcotráfico están metidos, bueno, eso sí lo desconozco. Pero, ¿qué es? Sí, no son hermanos. Solamente tienen la semejanza, pero no, no tienen, no son legítimamente como nosotros. Son solamente de pantalla, ¿no? ¿Quién se puede pensar de ellos? Cualquier cosa, ¿no? Call it a function of globalization or the tenacious will of the international drug market, but as far as we could determine, the Atacusi live, pray, and wait for the apocalypse right smack in the middle of the fastest growing coca region inside the largest cocaine producing country. We have this hostile Amazon rainforest, uh, this neglected region of the world where three countries meet with virtually porous borders. We have a uniquely Peruvian religious sect that is syncretic, apocalyptic, evangelical, fundamentalist, and significantly expansionist. They're deforesting the Amazon rainforest as they increase their settlements and their presence in the triple border region. 
We've seen how coca has become a powerful force in the neglected Peruvian Amazon, but the issue of coca production remains poorly understood and barely documented. After visiting these communities, it's clear that until the government offers an integrated solution for the people of the Peruvian Amazon, coca eradication will never be enough to end the profits that drug trafficking brings to the triple border, the promised land of Ezequiel Atacusi's living frontiers.